Hi there and welcome to this day in history for August 16th. August 16th is the 228th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 229th in leap years with 137 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is colloquial. Colloquial is an adjective that refers to language used in ordinary or familiar conversation, not formal or literary. This word evolved in the 18th century from Latin colloquium, which means conversation. And now we're going to start with the birthday of the Hongxi Emperor of China, born August 16, 1378. Hongxi means vastly bright. He was the fourth emperor of the Ming Dynasty and ruled less than a year, dying of an apparent heart attack at the age of 46. That happens sometimes. Even though his reign was short, he was credited, or he is credited, with reforms that made lasting improvements, and his son, who succeeded him as emperor, continued his policies. On July 16, 1858, President James Buchanan inaugurated the new transatlantic telegraph cable by exchanging greetings with Queen Victoria. This was an exciting new technology at the time. Unfortunately, that is a long way to run cables, and I've mentioned before that I don't think the ocean likes those cables. <laughs> they, uh, <clears throat> they don't uh, last very long that way. The message tended to be a bit weak, and the quality degraded from there, so the service was actually shut down in just a few weeks. This is the birthday of Colonel Thomas Edward Lawrence. Born August 16, 1888. Most of us know him as T.E. Lawrence, or perhaps more colloquially as Lawrence of Arabia. He was a British colonel, diplomat, writer, and archaeologist. Quite an interesting character. There's a Facebook page dedicated to T.E. Lawrence. He accomplished a lot of things on the Arabian Peninsula that most thought impossible. He made it home from war, only to die in a motorcycle accident at the age of 46. The Basilica of San Sebastian in Manila was the first all-steel church in Asia. It was officially inaugurated and blessed on August 16, 1891. This is the birthday of American cartoonist and animator Otto Mesmer, born August 16, 1892. He was the co-creator of the cartoon character Felix the Cat. Otto lived to the age of 91. August 16, 1896 saw the genesis of the Klondike Gold Rush when Skookum Jim Mason, George Carmack, and Dawson Charlie discovered gold in a tributary of the Klondike River in Canada. And yikes, another magnitude 8 plus earthquake in Chile on August 16, 1906. This one hit central Chile and killed thousands of people. This is the birthday of American actress Mae Clark, born August 16, 1910. She played in dozens of movies, but her most notable role may be that of Henry Frankenstein's Bride Elizabeth. <laughs> Miss Clark lived to the age of 81. This is the birthday of Menachem Begin, born August 16, 1913. He was a Nobel Prize laureate and Prime Minister of Israel for a number of years and lived to the age of 78. On August 16, 1913, Tohoku Imperial University of Japan became the first university in Japan to admit female students. On August 16, 1913, we also see the completion of the Royal Navy Battle Cruiser HMS Queen Mary. On August 16, 1920, Ray Chapman of the Cleveland Indians was hit on the head by a fastball thrown by New York Yankees' Carl Mays. Ray succumbed to his injuries early the next day, becoming the second player to die from injuries sustained in a Major League Baseball game. The first color sound cartoon, called Fiddlesticks, was released on August 16, 1930. 
it featured a character called Flip the Frog. This is the birthday of American actress Leslie Ann Warren, born August 16, 1946. I think her big breakout role was the title role in the television musical production of Cinderella. And I thought that was back in the 70s, but when I looked again, it was in the 60s. Anyway, she's had many parts in television roles and movies. The first issue of Sports Illustrated was published on August 16, 1954. This is the birthday of Canadian director, producer, and screenwriter James Cameron, born August 16, 1954. We can thank him for such greats as The Terminator, Aliens, The Abyss, Titanic, Avatar, and more. Quite a mind on that fella. On August 16, 1956, Bela Lugosi entered a coffin for the last time. He was 73. This is the birthday of American actress Angela Bassett, born August 16, 1958. Known for her biographical film roles, I particularly remember her as Tina Turner in the movie What's Love Got to Do With It? On August 16, 1960, Cyprus gained their independence from the United Kingdom. This is the birthday of American actor, director, producer, and screenwriter Steve Carroll, born August 16, 1962. He played the boss, Michael Scott, on the TV show The Office, <laughs> and of course, plenty of other movies. But I think my favorite part of his is as Gru in Despicable Me. <laughs> Elvis left the building for the last time on August 16, 1977. He was 42. I wasn't the biggest fan in the world, but you know, I appreciated his work and I remember where I was when I heard the news. Alrighty, moving on. August 16th, 1989, a solar particle event affected computers at the Toronto Stock Exchange, forcing a halt to trading. Now, just exactly what is a solar particle event? Also known as a solar proton event, or SPE, or a prompt proton event, this is something that happens when particles, mostly protons, are emitted by the sun and become accelerated either close to the sun during a flare or an interplanetary space by coronal mass ejection shocks. These particles can penetrate the Earth's magnetic field and cause ionization in the ionosphere. This creates an effect similar to auroral events, except it's caused by protons rather than electrons. I know, it makes my head spin too. <laughs> but energetic protons are a significant radiation hazard to spacecraft and astronauts. There were also several plane crashes on August 16 throughout flight history. Most of those plane crashes killed everyone on board. So going forward, I think I would be disinclined to take a plane ride on August 16th. Maybe I'm just superstitious. Stay safe out there, y'all. Today's song is It's Now or Never by Elvis Presley, number one, August 16th, 1960. Inspired by a 1949 song called There's No Tomorrow by Tony Martin, which was based on the Italian song O Sola Mio, the lyrics for It's Now or Never were written by Aaron Schroeder and Wally Gold. It sold more than 5 million records in countries around the world and was one of Elvis Presley's best-selling singles and his biggest international single ever. It's Now or Never spent five weeks in the Billboard Hot 100 number one spot where we find it on August 16th, 1960. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include the link to my blog page that is called, no really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, Parlor, 
bit shoot and getter all those links in that description Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.